Hello friends, and welcome to Red Lotus Yoga, Gentle Hatha with Tara. That's me. Hi. Uh, this is just a very basic introduction to talk about some principles of yoga and to talk about some props that you might need and some very basic spinal movements. So let's get started. Hatha Yoga. Yoga from Sanskrit meaning yoke. So it's joining body and breath. And everything that we do in yoga, we do very mindfully with our breath. We move with our breath. So there are eight limbs to yoga. And here in the Western world, we tend to think of just the asana or the postures or poses. Everybody knows down dog, right? And there is so much more to yoga than just the asana. There are the yamas and the niyamas, which are like the moral code of yoga. The yamas help us learn self-control. The niyamas help us know how to act in the world. And even though there is this moral code to yoga, yoga is not a religion. Um, you don't have to worship a certain way or to a certain deity. Any religion that you already practice or perhaps don't practice um, fits into yoga. It's just helping us learn how to be the best we can be thinking about the yamas and the niyamas. And I do incorporate those in the classes, so we will learn more about those. There is asana, which is the poses. There is pranayama, which is breath work. Yes, we all breathe, we don't think about it, but in yoga, we actually think about our breath. We focus on our breath, and we sometimes incorporate different types of breathing to help stimulate or cause a certain effect that we want. There is pratyahara, which is withdrawing from the senses, everything just going within and not aware of the senses. There is dharana, which is concentration. Dayara, which is meditation. And samadhi, which is that pinnacle of meditation that we see in practitioners where they can sit for hours and not be aware of any stimulus. So if you think about what I just talked about, four of the eight limbs really deal with meditation. And so we have the yamas and niyamas that help us know how to behave. But then we've got the asana and the breath work. And the purpose of the asana is to prepare our bodies to sit as we're working through those four limbs that really deal with meditation and finding that calm and that peace within. So there are props that you need. You don't have to have fancy props. And whether or not you use props will be up to you as you start working in different asana. The purpose of many of the props is to maybe bring the ground closer to us if we're standing up and doing a forward fold. And in that case, we might want blocks. Well, I don't have my blocks with me, but I do have a bunch of books. And so if I need to bring the ground a little closer, I may just stack up some books and place a hand on my pile of books to bring the ground closer to me so I don't have to stretch so far. You may want a strap. And when we use straps in my classes, the strap is not to bring you deeper into a pose. It's just to give you some support, some stability. You're going to want some kind of a cushion, very likely, or a bolster. Well, this is my little Pier 1 cushion that I can sit on. And this nice heavy duty foam pillow is my bolster that I use when I'm doing restorative poses or when I'm doing the ending shavasana, the ending resting pose. Depending on what kind of class we're doing, if we're doing a restorative class or we're doing yoga nidra, or at the end of any class when you're doing shavasana, you may want an eye pillow, something that you can just put over your eyes. This is a pretty one that my sweet mom gave to me. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can use a washcloth. I take these to my classes when I teach in the studio. And then I'll have a bunch of them in a big Ziploc bag with an old sock that I've put essential oils on. Sits in there with the washcloth sealed up and they smell wonderful. Brandy Mass of 
San Antonio Yoga Center has taught me that you can put just a few drops of the essential oil in the middle of the fold on your washcloth. And then you can either have that scented fold at your nose, or if that's too much for you, you can have that scented piece up at your forehead. Some people don't like scents. And so you can just have a washcloth, no scent, no oils, just to help close out the light anything that you might see. Of course, you're gonna want a mat. You might see that I have two crossed. This one is not very much of a mat. It's a little travel mat, but I use it when I'm teaching so that I can turn and always be on a mat. A blanket, blankets are always nice. You might want a blanket when we're doing a restorative class to lay down on the top of your mat and then you lay on it and you have a little bit more cush. Some people like to do that and have another blanket that they cover with. I don't want anything covering me because I'm already hot enough, but there are a lot of people who choose that. And that's something that's important. Your yoga is gonna look different than my yoga and different than everybody else that you might be doing yoga with. You need to make your yoga your own. So just make sure that you're comfortable Make sure that things that you're doing don't hurt. If they do, if you're in a live class, then you need to ask for modifications. If you're looking at a video that a teacher has posted, I would always recommend sending feedback to that teacher and say, hey, this is what I experienced when we were doing this. Can you help me figure out a better way to do it? Yoga shouldn't hurt. So if something's hurting, you need to come back out. And when we're doing classes, we'll talk about modifications and other poses that you can do. So, talking about spinal movement. There are seven spinal movements that we should do in any yoga class. And for what we're going to do today, I want to talk about just the alignment of our spine and hips. So what I find is that when I sit, I tend to go back a little bit. And I really want to keep my hips up so that my spine can stay nice and straight. So this is one of the uses for the, for the blanket. I can take this blanket and I can just sit on the very edge of it and that gives me just enough lift and support to help keep my spine straight. So that first spinal movement is spinal extension. If you're sitting here just hanging out, just sitting. Your spine needs to be in a neutral. You don't want to slump. You don't want to lean over. You don't want to lean to a side. You want that spine to be nice and straight as if someone had a, a string and they were pulling your head towards the ceiling. So here's a neutral spine and if I have my hands by my side and I inhale, I can extend my spine and stretch it and try and get my head closer to the ceiling. And then I can exhale and come back down into neutral spine. I really wondered about this and a couple of years ago when I was at the doctor, I had the gal measure me both neutral spine and extended spine. There was an inch difference. That's a lot. So spinal extension is one. Turn facing you again. So then we have a twist, a twist left and a twist right. And that's two more of our spinal movements. So sitting with your hands on the ground by your sides, spine is neutral. Inhale, arms up, extend that spine. And as you exhale, twist to one side. Your spine twists. One hand behind the opposite hand on your leg. You're not using it to pull you, it's just giving you some support. And from here, when we're in a twist, when we inhale, we think about extending that spine, and when we exhale, we think about twisting a little deeper or holding that twist. And moving with our breath, inhale, arms up, exhale, arms down. Let's do the other side. Inhale, arms up, spinal extension. Exhale, twist to the other side. Inhale, arms up, exhale down. You'll find that I don't cue you to left or right all the time. 
because that's part of making yoga your own. If I say to go left, you might want to go right, and then you might get flustered because, oh no, you're not going the same way that I am. That's okay. We're going to do the same thing to both sides. So moving with your breath, going to the side that feels right. So let's talk about the lateral movement. So arms down at your side. Keep one hand down on the ground, inhale the other arm up, and as you exhale, you start to move to the side where your hand is down. And the benefit of this lateral, I'm hoping that you're starting to feel a stretch on the side where your arm is lifted. Inhale up, exhale that arm down, inhale the other arm up, exhale, and move over. Those intercostal muscles we have in between our ribs that we don't think about very often really like this lateral. Inhale up and exhale down. So then we have a forward fold. And a forward fold is any time we have our spine extended and we're moving forward. And then I'm folding forward, I'm hinging at my hips, I'm moving down. I'm inhaling up. Now a forward fold can be done lying on your back. If you're lying on your back and your legs are up the wall in what we call Vaparita Karani, if you were standing and you folded over, you could see it very easily. So sometimes you have to think about, okay, what is my body doing? And then a back bend. Back bends don't have to be crazy difficult. Inhale your arms up, exhale your arms down, inhale arms to hips, take your chin and gaze up to the ceiling and there you go, a little baby back bend. And you hold for the exhale, inhale back up. So those seven movements need to be incorporated into any of our yoga classes. And we are young, as young as our spine is flexible, and so that's what we are working on when we do all of those different spinal movements. I hope you're excited about finding some of my yoga sessions, yoga flows on Red Lotus Yoga on Facebook or on the Yoga Den um, channel on YouTube. I'll see you on the mat. Take care.